Hi, I'm Lance Koike, and this is the left sideline, right gluteus medius progression. So we're actually going to have five different exercises here that I like to work people through, um, starting with something super easy to make it, you know, not too challenging to feel this right glute med, right glute max area turning on. Uh, primary focus, though, is shutting off the right inner thigh. Um, so things are... <laughs> They're not only going to get more complex, this is kind of a brain workout, but it's also gonna get more intense. And towards the end of these, they're actually gonna be pretty hard to do. Not just correctly, but like to do. <laughs> um, and it's easier if you have less stiffness to overcome, but if you had that, you wouldn't need to do these exercises, right? So first one, uh, we're gonna need, let me talk about my setup here. We're gonna need a wall or something that's not going to move so that we can put our feet in it. We're gonna need a bolster to rest our feet on top. That just helps increase the range of motion that you're able to access during these exercises. And then we're gonna need another bolster underneath your left belly. Uh, it just helps you get the right spine shape, supports you a little bit, and helps you cue on the left uh, outer abdominal while you're doing this. So the first exercise in our progression is uh, the left side lying right glute max so this is a classic i do like to work through this one i'm assuming that if you're getting programmed to this you're not going to have much trouble with this but if you are you know for whatever reason one day uh things are feeling stiff or you're not feeling that right glute you can always just regress back to this give it some time to calm down that right inner thigh which is shutting off your right glute and uh, just let it kind of settle in before progressing on to the next level. So for this one, you're gonna lay on your side. You got that bolster underneath your left ab. Knees are, hips are bent up to 90 degrees and knees are bent to about 90 degrees as well. Both feet are in the wall down there. Uh, first, we're gonna exhale and push the left hip down into the ground. Next, we're gonna push the feet into the wall and the right knee comes forward ahead of the left knee and last we're going to rotate the right knee up toward the ceiling and hold right there i'm just going to take breaths i like to hold for five breaths i'm going to breathe in through the nose out through the mouth and if you're feeling any uh, front of thigh hip flexor quad kind of stuff make sure you're keeping that heel pressure into the wall and make sure you're keeping that left hip pushing down into the ground as you support yourself up here you can try to relax the left leg left thigh and that will place more of the tension in the right glute And then one other thing, one other thing you can try to do is relax that right inner thigh, like uh, like you're trying to make this leg a little heavier, and that often will shift all the weights over into the right glute. So that's about it. If you're not feeling it, just give it some time. Sometimes you need a couple breath cycles for things to move around and for that right inner thigh to settle down. That was progression number one. Now progression number two is the left side lying knee toward knee. Now I have a whole progression on how to get up to the knee toward knee. So if you're having trouble getting to here, you might wanna watch that video instead. Hopefully though, you're gonna be able to rock this. So it's basically the right glute max, but now we're gonna involve the left thigh a bit more. So we're laying on the left side, exhale and push the left hip down in the ground. I feel my left outer abs turn on. I've got pressure of my feet in the wall. And then I'm going to stack my knees. The right one doesn't have to be ahead of the left one now. And we're gonna turn the right knee up. I should feel the right glute kick on, holding that leg up there. It doesn't need to be super intense, but I should feel that. And then after that, I'm gonna hold the right knee right there, and I'm gonna pick the left knee, turn the left knee up toward the right knee, but not all the way up to it. I'm gonna need to use this hand, my right hand here, to brace myself so I'm not falling over because I don't have a whole lot of support now, but here I should feel, I should need to take a breath. 
I should feel that pressure of that left hip down in the ground. I should feel three muscles work in here. The right glute, the left inner thigh, and the left outside hip. If you're feeling, again, if you're feeling that quad or that TFL on the front outside corner of your left hip, then you're trying to do something too much. So you might need to push that left hip down into the ground some more. That tends to fix that one up. So that was number two. Number one was the left side lying right glute max. Number two was the left side lying knee toward knee. Number three is where we start to challenge this right glute med a bit more. So those first two are more like, can I get the motor control to turn on the right glute? And this third one is, okay, if I got it, let's start loading it a bit and specifically in different positions. So we're still gonna stay uh, hips bent up like this, but now we're gonna take this right knee and we're gonna put it, this is why this filing cabinet works super well for me, because we're gonna put that right knee uh, extending back and abducting up a bit. I'm still keeping the weight of my legs supported though. That's pretty important for getting here. You can do it unsupported, but it's a lot harder. And so for our progression number three, we're supporting it. Um, to do this, again, it's basically the same stuff. We're just layering on small steps ahead of progression. So we exhale, push that left hip down into the ground. From here, I'm gonna say, pick this left knee up just slightly. So you're feeling that left inner thigh. If you're having trouble with that, I, I like to do that because it makes sure that I'm in my left hip. But if you have trouble doing that, you don't need to do that part, but you do still need to keep that left hip pressed into the ground, okay? And then the next step is just going to be, I'm keeping this right leg supported, so I'm not holding all of the weight of the right leg, but now I'm gonna turn it up, just like we did our glute max exercise, and I should feel my right glute kick on when I do that. It doesn't have to be super intense here, okay? The big thing is when you pick that knee up, you gotta make sure that your hips don't rotate toward the ceiling, because then you're not gonna feel the glute because you're not doing the glute, using the glute to do the movement, okay? So we're just holding that uh, for breaths. Again, I like to do five breaths, probably a five sets. So breath in through the nose, out to the mouth. <sighs> make sure that left hip stays pushing into the ground. Oh, and that kicks on my right glute. Perfect. I like it when things go according to plan. As you exhale, let's say as you inhale, you can try to lift up some more. And as you exhale, you can try to reach your right knee away from you some more. But you're not going to get a whole lot of movement here. So don't force it because then you're just going to kick on this hip flexor TFL on this right side. That I did and I felt it and it was correct, but it was probably so subtle that it doesn't come up on the camera very easily. Remember, make sure to pause after your exhales. And good. So I'm training the right glute there, but I'm keeping everything secure on my left side. I should feel that right glute max. I should feel this left inner thigh and I should feel the left outside hip. That was progression number three. Yes, it was. Okay, so first one was the left side lying right glute max. Second one was the left side lying knee toward knee. Third one, we brought that top leg up and it stayed supported. Now the fourth one is where it really intensifies. So I'm gonna scoot away from the box just a bit so that I can straighten my right leg in line with the rest of my torso here. What we're doing is we're making the lever longer on the glute. So now the leg feels heavier, even though it's the same leg, right? Just because it's further away from the point of the muscle that's supporting you. Everything else is pretty similar though. So you're gonna, you're gonna notice uh, some repetition. Hopefully you get deja vu doing this. Make sure that bolster is under the left ab. And we're gonna exhale, push that left hip down to the ground. And that'll actually move your right foot. Keep it supported though. Next, we're gonna pick up this left knee to make sure you get that left inner thigh and that left outside hip. Again, if you don't feel those, we gotta make sure that you're pushing that left hip down into the ground the whole time. 
And now I would say don't move on if you don't have those things, okay? Because uh, <laughs> you're not going to magically find them once you make the exercise harder. <laughs> so we got that left hip secured. Then and only then do you exhale and reach the inside of your foot away from you. That will tilt your foot. So we evert the ankle so the inside of the foot comes away from you. And just doing that, you should feel your glute kick on, as I did. And this is basically it. Hold this position. Just try to keep that ankle turned out. Okay, so that one's really intense because the leg gets really long and usually the right inner thigh is pretty stiff. What I will say is normally with these other ones, we're just kind of working on motor control and you only need like a mental break of 10 or 15 seconds before you do your next set. For this one, this is, this is like an exercise, right? This is like training. And this muscle and probably this other stuff is gonna get pretty tired you have to stay as relaxed as possible, but you're gonna need very focal, intense contraction of this left outer hip, that, or sorry, the left outer hip, the left inside thigh, and then the right outer hip as well. The glute's gonna feel a little bit different, but you should still have it supporting you. So, that was number four. We're just trying, don't try to pick the leg up yet. Okay, so number four is keep the leg down and just get that leg reaching long, that right leg reaching long. That'll help you put more pressure of your left hip in the ground. That's number four. So number one, we were scooted back toward the wall, knees bent up to 90 degrees. Uh, we did the right knee forward, right knee up, right glute max. That was number one. Number two was the knee toward knee. Number three, we brought that top leg up, still kept it supported, and not all the way back necessarily. You can move it all the way back if you have the right setup, but it doesn't need to be. We were just doing the right glute max with the leg kind of up and out like this. And then number four, we scooted away. I'm not gonna tell you the real name for this because it's too long. Uh, <laughs> right leg goes super straight to increase the lever and intensity on the left or on the right glute. I did that again. Um, Number five is basically that, but you're gonna pick this leg up. Okay, so since this is challenging, we're gonna walk through it all again. So I exhale, I push that left, I gotta fix my bolster here, push that left hip into the ground. <sighs> then I pick the left knee up, keep that left hip pushed in the ground. Yep, got it. Then I exhale and reach long through the inside of the right foot down that way. And then if I'm feeling ambitious, I try to pick up on the inhale. <sighs> Hold it up there for breaths. If you feel your neck kick on, that's an indication that you're doing it wrong. If you feel your, your foot is desperately trying to supinate, that means you can't keep your hip abducted and you need to stop. Uh, the biggest thing that people mess up, and I mentioned this earlier though, is when you try to abduct that hip, when you try to raise that right leg, uh, you do it with your back and your hip sags up like this and you lose pressure of that left hip in the ground. So make sure it's very important during these that you make sure you keep pressure of that left hip in the ground the whole time. Let's run through the pro progression one more time. We had the left side lying right glute max. We had the knee toward knee. We had the bring the right leg up, keep it supported glute max. Then we had the straight leg. I call this the right glute med. And then we had the unsupported straight leg, bringing it up like that. 
good luck.